Hi there, William Drescher, Troubles Behind Me Canine Training. We provide dog training services and rehabilitation for troubled dogs, puppies, you can do a great start, and of course, their families. We're based here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Santa Fe, but we do a lot of work online these days. And I recently did an online uh, open conversation, and I had a number of people ask me a couple of questions, uh, and I wanted to address them just kind of directly. First off, someone asked me, do I do protection dog training? Another person asked me, do I do service dog training? And the last person called and said, uh, by the way, I provide service dog certification uh, for the ADA. Do you need to have any clients who need to be certified? Which I just really just kind of bent me the wrong way because there is no such thing as ADA certification. I'll explain that and I'll talk about why if somebody offers you that, you should uh, question what they're actually offering you. So in first question, protection dog training services. I don't do any protection dog training services because I don't believe a dog should be a weapon. A dog is your companion, your pet. And if it were to attack somebody and you could call it off, that's great. You're still liable for what they did to that person. And I'm certainly not going to be the person who taught your dog how to do that. So you can point to them and say, well, he taught me how to teach the dog to attack. I couldn't call him off. Now I'm liable? Forget it. No protection dog, but I'm sorry. I just don't do that work. Service dog training is interesting. The question is, what kind of service do you want the dog to perform for you? And do you need to have that even registered or not? Now, this is an interesting question. Uh, I had a client in New York who needed to teach a dog how to take medication out of a refrigerator and bring it to them. That's a service that the dog has to be, be able to train on. We train for that, but they weren't really planning on going anywhere publicly with the dog. They just need to do so. That's one kind of service dog training. I have a service dog. I'll show it to you. This is Troubles. Troubles behind the canine training. That's where the name comes from. Uh, Troubles is my search and rescue service dog. Here, I'll play it for you here as we go forward. Um, you know, Troubles watches me for something, but he's also registered for FEMA for search and rescue. Um, pretty much retired now. He's nine years old. But I can take Troubles anywhere on the planet, and I know exactly how he respond and what he'll do. And I know he'll listen to me among above anything else that's going on there. So, once took him on the subway in New York City. I actually took him many times on the subway. Little girl sat on him, didn't react to it, didn't look at her, didn't move, just looked at me like, Dad, why is this kid sitting on me? Um, take him to the uh, Plaza Hotel in New York City, the New York City Marathon he was at, inside the Metropolitan Museum of Art, at a public screening, uh, two buses and a train and another bus to get him to Coney Island, didn't bother with anybody, public spaces in New York City, in an elevator where he doesn't scare people and has to just ignore them as they go forward. Um, all of these things, being ignoring other dogs, looking at them, barking at them, playing with them, that kind of stuff. It takes a watchful eye to have a dog be able to do this and be really focused on you and what you need and what you're looking at for that dog. So this is Troubles in a Bathroom in Nashville, Tennessee. I left him there, how to behave and not you know, make anybody nervous. Uh, this is him in front of the Ryman Theater. I took a picture of him here, stood back for a while, let people walk by him. Yeah, he doesn't move. He doesn't react to people saying hello, nice dog, that kind of stuff. He's a service dog. Now, whether it's a public space in Oklahoma City or the Trans-Allegheny uh, uh, in, uh, uh, Insane Asylum, he's been a lot of places where basically people go, what a beautiful dog, you can trust him. And yes, he's an AKC registered Chesapeake Bay Retriever, has the look of a service dog, certainly can perform all the things that I expect a service dog to do from my own perspective and my own training. But let's talk about what that really means. So I'm going to take us out of this page for a moment and take us over to this website, and I'm going to make it full screen so you can see it, so you can read it as I read it, just so you understand what it says. This is the ADA.gov website, the U.S. Department of Justice Civil Rights Division website that's talking about frequently asked questions about service dogs and the ADA, the ADA being the American with Disabilities Act. Now, it has a definition down here of what a service dog is, and it says one thing that the service dog do work or perform tasks mean. Now, for example, person with the diabetes has a dog that is trained to alert him when the dog, when, the, when his blood sugar is, uh, reaches high or low levels. That's one kind of service dog, right? Then there's another thing here, my favorite one. Are emotional support or therapy animals considered service dogs? No. <laughs> okay. So that's not technically a service dog. That's an ESA dog, and they have lots of certifications for that. But as you scrub down through this website, uh, asking all sorts of questions about what is a service dog, what does it need to perform, how does it need to act, or, you know, how do you find out what a service dog is, it has this great gray box, which I wish was bright red and blinking. And I'll show you what it says full screen. Full screen it says, there are individuals and organizations that sell service animal certification or registration documents online. These documents do not convey any rights under the ADA 
and the Department of Justice does not recognize them as proof that the dog is a service animal. So if we come back to, let's say, oh, I'll come back to this website for a moment. This is servicedogcertifications.org. And it has a wonderful thing about the laws that are there, and it's good information, and it has a way of register here. And of course, you can now go down a little lower down here and find out since oh you can register your dog for a service dog registry get a cool little badge and a little thing of certification that means nothing in the court of law it has nothing to do with the ada it simply says that service dog certifications.org sold you something that said the dog is certified now there are little higher end places that will help you uh do an adjudication if you like uh, the akc has this great thing called the canine uh uh or, or uh sorry urban canine good citizen. And if you look at some of the information that's there for dog owners, which is one of my favorite things to look at for people, there's a test kit. Uh, talks about what equipment you have to do, what fees, food, things that the dog has to be able to test for, crossing a street, ignoring food, blah, blah, blah. But these are something that the AKC put out. They have nothing to do with ADA certification. They simply say the AKC says if you can pass this test, it's there. And they'll send somebody out to your house to adjudicate for that information if that's something you're looking for. You know, that's something. And if you were to offer that service, I'd be like, okay, that's something if you want. Um, you know, at the end of the day, though, what they're really selling you is a tag and a ribbon and a little thing that says, hey, the AKC says your dog is a good dog. But is that a service dog? Well, if it's to get it on a plane because it's an emotional support animal, the answer is no. Now, let's go back. So... When people knock on my door and say, do I do service dog certifications? No, but I do service dog training if you've got something you want. And I have to make decide, you know, what is you're looking for? If you're looking for a dog like I had in New York to be able to pull medication out of a refrigerator, that could be a longer process. If you're looking for a dog to come up and sit on your foot and look right up at you and go, hey, Dad, I don't, something's up with you. Well, Trouble did that on his own, and I recognize it as I get it. You're recognizing I'm not feeling well, and I'm aware of that stuff. Um, one of the questions that a cop will ask you sometimes, or someone will ask you is, hey, what kind of service dog is that? Can't ask me that question. That's a violation of my rights. They can ask you, and I was asked recently on an Amtrak, uh, is the dog providing a service while you're in transit? Well, for trouble search and rescue uh, stuff, unless we're searching the train for something, no. Uh, for watching me for a, a medical condition, absolutely. Now, I don't have to describe what that is. I just simply have to say yes. So, I decided that I need to have a series of tests that I know a dog will pass before I would consider somebody saying, that dog's a good dog, it's safe to take someplace. Now, every, not every dog is. I've worked with a lot of people who have emotional support animals. Yeah, they just have to be able to do some basic thing. I have a client with a dog that just need to be able to get on a plane and travel with it on a plane. We worked on that, how to sit in, an, how to work in an airport, how to get on and off the plane, how to sit at her feet for long periods of time, basic one-on-one stuff. It didn't have to do a lot of other things, but that was an emotional support animal that had a, a, a note from a, psych, from, from a medical professional as well as that certification. So I'm going to talk about my own personal certifications that I do. I'm going to go back up here to the site so you can see it. Uh, here's what I use. It's something I've developed over the years that I just kind of like. It talks about obedient, basic obedience, sit, stay, come down, heal, basic manners, uh, training through controlling aids, leash tension, uh, inappropriate service dog conduct, what do you want to, admit, what do you want to avoid, working position, uh, vehicles and public transportation, what's the dog like work like in a parking lot, controlled entry into a building, navigating through a store, working with the distractions, obedience training, uh, what's he like in a restaurant, what's he like in an elevator, does he behave himself on stairs, does he not run up and run down, knock people over, uh, working around other dogs, which is an important part of that, uh, working in a public restroom, uh, and most importantly, probably the biggest one I skipped through, I guess, is uh, walking around a store, uh, knowing that the dog will sit, stay still, and do and do nothing else. Troubles, pass this with fine, flying colors. Pops, my new service dog in training, I'm big Tosa Inu, he'll probably do about 60% of it. We've been working on this for a year. It's going to take time to develop some of those skills. And I'm willing to work on it, but this is not something you do in four or five sessions, okay? This takes time. So when someone knocks my door and says, hey, do you do service dog training? I can help you get your dog to the point where it's well behaved. Whether you decide you want to register through an AKC setup or whether you just want to go online and get yourself a tag and a, and a, and a bunch of gear, that's up to you. But to me, it's a simple thing. I'm not going to certify the dog because it's up to you whether you want to do that and whether the dog's going to behave to the standard that you expect. So if you're interested in getting some help from us for regular service dogs, or we do a lot of work with rescued dogs from, from shelters or, or young puppies who are having some issues with families, we'd be happy to help. Give us a shout at troublesbehindme.com. 
We look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, stay safe. COVID looks like it's almost over. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye.